Welcome to the invoicer.ai dashboard. In today's video, we're going to give you a walkthrough of invoicer.ai and show you everything from the dashboard to creating invoices and estimates, tracking payments, and managing your clients and items. Let's get started. This is the dashboard screen. In the dashboard, you have your company logo and name, whether you have a premium account or you're on a free trial. You have your action buttons up here to create a new invoice, a new estimate, or add a client. And then you have this overview uh, where you can choose a date range from all time to today. Below that, you have your recent invoices and recent estimates. These are scrollable lists you can scroll through these show you lines for invoices and their status and the amounts in the client. You can click the invoice number here and that will bring you directly into the invoice if you want to make some edits to it or get a better look at it. Same with the estimates. Below this you have your recent activity and under recent activity uh, it just shows you a list of recent actions. So you can see here the invoice PDF was viewed by the client and when that happened. You can see here that a receipt was sent. Um, you can see here that the stub was viewed. That's the preview page that the user sees after they click the link in the email. Uh, and similar to the recent invoices and recent estimates lists above, you can click these links here to be brought directly to the document. On the left, we have your menu. We've got invoices. You can expand these estimates, clients, and items. Below that, you have accept payments. Uh, if you go through the accept payments process, you'll be able to accept credit card, debit card, mobile wallet, as well as bank transfers and different payment methods depending on your country. Below this, you have logout if you need to log out, and then settings, support, which takes you into our help page, privacy, and terms. So let's jump into invoices. I'll start with the invoice list and then we'll move into actually creating an invoice. So let's go ahead. You can click list invoices here. You can actually click right here. This title will bring you to the same location. So here we go. Here's our list of invoices. Up at the top, you have your uh, button to create a new invoice. We have our notifications uh, icon as well. You can click this if you want to see a list of notifications. This is the same information you'll see in your recent activity list on the dashboard. With these, you, you can click the link to be brought to the document, and you can also click client info, which will bring you into the, the client's info. Uh, you can hover over the dates here. If you want to see exact date and time, you hover over it. Uh, and if you want to get rid of a notification, you just click the X. You can click out of this or here. You can also click this to be brought into the notification setting. Uh, we're not going to do that just yet. Okay, back to the invoices list. So for the invoices list, you have filters up top. You can filter by all, unsent, sent, partially paid. So this is when you haven't paid the full invoice. This one, for example, you can see it was paid 25,000 out of 60. Paid, so all your paid invoices. Owing, anything that's owing. Overdue, refunded, and archived. We'll go back to all. You can also search. So just start typing. It'll automatically filter. You can search by uh, invoice number. You can search by um, client. Below this, you have your sorting. So you can sort by the invoice number, status, client name, and you can also do ascending or descending order. Uh, over here are the different view options. So you have your standard view, and then we have a new view called the compact view. So if you click compact view, this is a little bit of an easier view to look at when you have a lot of different documents. Uh, and you get the same options in here as you would in our standard view. And then once you're in the compact view, you can also select what uh, columns you want to see. So if you just didn't want 
certain columns, you want to clean it up a bit to make it even easier on your eyes, you can do that. And then download CSV, which will download a CSV file, all of this data. I'm going to go back to the standard view. And I'm going to show you some things on each row here. So for each invoice, we have our status, we have our, our action time. So this was paid two months ago. If you hover over, this will change to view history. You can click that and then you can see the history of the invoice. So you can see that a receipt was sent two months ago. You can hover over this for the exact date and time. Uh, so you have your invoice number, date, client, client email, uh, the balance, the amount paid, and then edit, copy, download, resend, client, payment, and archive. You can click anywhere in the invoice uh, and it'll, it will take you directly into the editor with the exception of right here or these sp specific action buttons. Uh, edit obviously takes you to editing. Copy will copy the invoice. So it makes a duplicate. The only thing different uh, in the duplicate is you still have to select a client, but all the other information will be there. Download, if you wanna download a PDF of the invoice. Resend, if, if you need to resend it since this has already been sent, which if you go here, we can see it was sent on April 25th at 421. Uh, this one below it says send because it's never been sent. Client, so you click this, you'll be brought to the client. Payment, if you want to add a payment, you can record a payment. It automatically adds the value. Since there's no payment due on this one, it's a zero because there's already been a payment made. Uh, but for example, if we go to this one, it'll automatically put in the $21,000 owing. Uh, the date, so you can select the date, and you can also choose to send a receipt. And then you click Add Payment. So what will happen here is you'll add the payment and a receipt will automatically be sent to your client. You can go to the settings here to turn this on. So every time you add a payment, you don't have to hit this checkbox. It will just automatically send a receipt for you. Then we have our archive. So let's go ahead and archive this one, just so you can see what happens. Archiving doesn't delete it, but it is one step out of two in the delete process. So first step, if you want to delete an invoice, is you archive it. And then you can go into your archived invoices and you'll see all your archived invoices here. This just helps clean up your invoice list, but if you don't want to get rid of that invoice, you still need it, maybe for record keeping, leave it in here. If you want to delete it, maybe there was a mistake or something, you don't need this invoice anymore, you click delete. Just remember that once you delete this invoice, it cannot be recovered. It's deleted forever. Uh, if you don't want this invoice archived anymore, you can also hit unarchive and it will bring it back to here. But I'm gonna hit archive. I'm going to go to archived and we're going to delete it. Delete, and now it's gone. You get the information up here saying what happened. And that's it for our invoices list. And we'll go to the compact view for a minute. So similar to the standard view, uh, you have your status, you have your invoice number, your client, issue date, due date, which is one thing we don't have in the standard view. That's just the issue date there. Paid uh, and the balance. And if you hover over the status, you'll see view history. So you can click that and you get your history. You can click any of these to be brought into the editor for that invoice. And then you have your actions, edit, copy, download, resend, client, payment, and archive. Now moving on, let's go to create a new invoice. So you click new invoice in the menu. You can also hit it up in the top. And now we're brought to the new invoice screen. Up top here, you have your invoice status. You have some action buttons where you can view a preview of the invoice. A PDF to download a PDF, send to send it, reminders. So once you add a client and they have an email, you can turn this on. Uh, this is a premium feature, so you have to have an account, a paid account to use it. Currency, if you invoice in different currencies, you can select it. Your currency is from here. You can set any invoice 
to any currency you want. You're not locked in. You can have a main currency for your account, uh, which means that every invoice when you create it will be in that currency. But let's say you need to send, sometimes you need to send invoices in Canadian dollars or in euros. You can do that per invoice. Uh, and we support up to 135 different currencies. Uh, you can just start typing in the country name or the currency and it will show up here. A logo, you can drag and drop a logo onto here or just click and select one from your computer or your device. Uh, your from information, so you add in your name. Uh, you can we use Google Address Autocomplete. So once you start typing in the address, you can just select one from here. It will fill in the rest of the information. You can add your phone number. Uh, there's a little saved uh, thing right here. And if you start making changes, you'll see it will change to saving. So this shows you that the information is saving or it's been saved because as you add info into here, it automatically saves. So you don't have to worry about clicking a save button or anything like that. Uh, your client, so you can either add a client, you could say my new client, and you can create a new client if you want. You can add the address for that client. Uh, we'll just select one from here, phone number, and if you're done editing the client, you can click lock client. You don't have to, you can still create the invoice. It's all good. It just means that you won't be able to edit it once it's locked. Let's say you don't want that client anymore. Let's, let's choose a different one. Let's go to client two. So you can select another client if you want. Over here, you have your date issued. You can select your dates here, date due, when you want to set that invoice to be due. Invoice number, you can choose the format that you want this to be, and the system will automatically increment for you. Um, just make sure that it ends in a number. Let's say you just want it to be like this. And when you go to create another invoice, it'll go to 10,049. You can add uh, a value here. This is just a field, an extra field. If you need to add a PO number, or a reference number, or a a tracking number, something like that, you can add it here. Over here, uh, you can change the color. So we can change our color, anything we want. And this will adjust the color on the headings and the, the line here. If you're happy with your color, you can click check this to save it as the default. Below we have our line items. So right here, we can select a line item. We can add our rate. This one I just pre-selected because it was already available. You can change your quantity. And then you have a description field. This description field uh, can expand uh, as you type. It does expand as you type. Uh, if you want more room, you can also just select it down. We can add a tax if we want to an item. You just click add tax and then the default tax, the value of 5% will show up, and then you have to give your tax a name. So if you've never used Invoicer before and you've never added a tax, you won't have any tax names in here. So we'll just, the default is to call it tax, but you can add other ones as well. If, if you don't want tax on the, an item, you just click the delete. If you want to add a new item that you haven't saved before, you can type it in right here. So you type in the item name and you select create new item. This will create the item. You can give it a rate, quantity if needed, the default is one, and your item description. Once you've created that item, it automatically saves. So you'll be able to see it over here in your items list and you'll be able to use it on uh, new invoices and estimates. Let's add another line item. All right, so now we have two. They're both getting taxed at 5%. Let's add another tax here. Let's go HST. But let's say our commission line item, we only want to tax it with HST. So we're going to remove the other tax. This one's taxed with 
tax and HST, and this one just has HST. We could remove that as well if we want, or you can just have no tax on an item. So that's handy if you have taxable and non-taxable items, or you have to apply different taxes per item on an invoice. Right here, you can drag your line items around if you need to edit the order of them. You just select this and drag it. If you need to add more line items, you can just add them here and you can add as many as you need. Uh, discounts, so if you need to add a discount, you can add it here. You can call it whatever you want, new customer, discount. And you can choose discounts in percent-based or dollar-based, so 25% or, you know, $1,000, and the calculations will happen automatically for you. You can add as many discounts as you need. Uh, we went over taxes already, uh, but if you want to, you can just click add tax here and add a tax if you need to add another one. We'll get rid of that, get rid of that. Uh, deposits, so if you need to request a deposit for the invoice, could be handy if you are a contractor and you need to receive funds before you start a project, you can add it here. So, you know, an example would be uh, first deposit, say you need 25% to start the project, and then you could be second deposit, and you need another 25% as the project commences. You can add as many of these as you need. Uh, and again, it's percent-based or dollar-based. Below that, you'll have total deposits requested. And if you click add payment here, it's going to automatically assume that the payment is for this deposit amount. But you can adjust this. You can change the date and the value here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that for a second, and I'm going to remove these deposits. Um, now, what will happen if I click add payment, it's going to assume that the payment is for this value. So this just saves you from entering in that value. Uh, the system is assuming that's what the payment will be for. Obviously, you can adjust that as needed. Uh, and once you do that, you'll see your status changes up here. It says partial, which means there was a partial payment. And the amount due now is $15,828.13. Down below, you have your notes. So you can say, thanks for your business. business. We appreciate your support. And you can save that as default if you want. Um, your terms, you can also set those, whatever they are, and save those as default. Down below, you have the attachment section where you can add a attachment. So what we'll do is we'll just drag uh, an invoice onto here as an example. The attachment's been added to the invoice. The client will see this from the, the stub screen. And this is handy if you have a receipt or you know another invoice or perhaps some contract terms you want to upload. Uh, you can do that and include it in the invoice. And if you don't want that, you just click delete. So I'm going to put them back because we're going to move on to the stub screen. So reminders, you click that to toggle them on. You can set them. You can send up to three reminders. The first one, you choose the day. So zero days after, after the due date. That means if there's no payment been received on the due date, a reminder goes out. And then you can send two more after that. So you could say perhaps seven days after, and then maybe 14 days after, whatever you want. Uh, and reminders are sent at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can also set account-wide reminders in your settings. So what that means is you can have this default to always be on and for these values to be the same for any invoice you send. I'll click the view button stub screen. So this is the invoice stub. So this is the same screen your clients will see with the exception of these buttons up here. But they'll see essentially this where you have the title of the document, your logo, your company name, the balance due, view the invoice or download, uh, the invoice number here, due date, total balance, status. And then below this, we have a list of payments. And then there's your company info, phone number, address, uh, and then attachments. So, and so from here, you can edit this if you need to make edits or you can send it. If you click send now, I'll just send it here just so you can see it in action. And now you can see up here, it's sent it. Here, if you have payments, uh, online payments enabled, if you turn this on, 
you'll see a pay now button here uh, where the user can click that and they'll be brought into a screen into the checkout screen where they can pay with whatever payment method you have set up so that could be uh, a credit card debit card mobile wallets like apple pay and google pay as well as bank transfers uh, or other different payment methods depending on your country we're going to go back into the app screen here i'm going to turn off reminders up here you notice this this was a one before but now it's a two so if we click this we'll see that the invoice was delivered so and i'm going to view the invoice and now we can see that our status has changed let's take a look so you can see that the email was viewed so i viewed the email and the stub was viewed so the client has viewed the stub me being the client just for this demonstration uh, if i click the view invoice in the stub you're going to get another notification showing that the pdf was viewed five different notifications so you can see that the invoice was sent uh, so it was delivered to your client you can see that the invoice was viewed by your client the email you can see that the invoice stub was viewed so that's them viewing that preview screen and then if they actually click a link to look at the invoice um, you'll see that the PDF was viewed as well so estimates we'll go to list estimates we won't spend as much time on these as we did with invoices because a lot of the information is the same although there are um, a few differences so when you create an estimate it'll show up in your estimates list and similar to invoices you have you know history all the info for the estimate the action buttons are fairly similar. You have edit, copy, download, send, client, but you also have approve. And this is where you can approve the estimate. And then you have an archive as well. Uh, and same thing, you have your standard view and your compact view. So let's go ahead and create an invoice first, and then I'll show you about approving, or sorry, an estimate, and then I'll show you about approving estimates. New estimate, you have your view, PDF, send, approve an invoice, and your currency. So depending on your account, if you have a premium account, then you have this button, approve an invoice, which is through a setting that you turn on in your settings. So what happens here after you create your estimate, you can click this button and it'll approve the estimate. And once it approves the estimate, it will automatically create an invoice. So let's go ahead, let's create an estimate for and let's click approve an invoice so now what's happening is the estimate was approved and a new invoice was created so now we're over in the invoices you can see over here up top you can see it says edit invoice now so this is now an invoice I, I have the setting turned on here as well that automatically sends so not only does it create an invoice it sends it to your client so you need to make sure that the invoice is exactly what you want it to be before you turn that setting on. Otherwise, you may send an invoice to your client that is missing some information. I'll show you that setting in a moment, but I'll just take a quick, we'll take a quick peek at this invoice. Uh, it's all the same info that was in the estimate, but it's just in an invoice now and it says amount due, right? So let's go back to our estimate list. And we can see over here, this was created and it's been invoiced so we can see that it was invoiced seconds ago so that just means that an invoice was created from this estimate uh, if you have an estimate that hasn't been approved you can just click approve right here if you want another thing with these let's go click into this one you can go ahead and send this to your client so you click send they get it they go to the stub screen and they can approve it from here so if your client clicks approve now it's been approved. So we know it's been approved up here and that's because the client approved it. Um, now we click generate invoice. So we've generated the invoice. It hasn't been sent to them yet because we didn't click approve an invoice. We just click generate and here we go. So if we're happy with this, we can go send and we can send it to our client. Moving on, we have our clients over here. So we can list our clients. It's a bit of a different screen, a little bit of different information from in as invoices and estimates. And here is our client screen. You have all, you have archived, 
you have a download clients link. Um, you have download fields, so you can select all of these. You can deselect some if you don't need all of them. And then you click download and you'll get a CSV file of your clients. Up here, you can search for your clients. And then you have your client name, your column here for your clients. CCY is for currency, uh, the revenue that that client has brought in, how much they paid, how much is owing. And then you also have these columns for invoices and estimates. So you can click these and this will bring you to the invoices for that client. And then you have your actions. So you can edit your client, you can create an invoice for that client or an estimate, or you can archive that client. So if we go to click create new invoice, the client will be selected. And then if we go to new estimate, same thing. There we go. And if we wanna view the invoices for that client, you can see up here, so it just makes it a little bit easier to navigate the app. If you're looking at clients, you wanna see what their invoices or their estimates are, you can always click these buttons, or if you need to create a new document for them, you can do that. Let's add a client. So you click add client and then we can add our client. Add their email, phone number. We will add their address. And down here, this client we just created so they won't have any invoices. But if you were on the screen um, editing a client that existed and who had invoices, you can click this and be brought to their invoices. And that's it. So there's your clients. Let's move on to items. Every time you create an item, it gets automatically saved. Same thing with clients, they're automatically saved. Uh, so to view your items, you click into here and you click list items. So here's some existing items we have. You have the item name, uh, the category, category or subcategory, these are optional, the price, and then action. So you can edit the item, you can copy it, archive, you can create an invoice, that has this already selected, for example. So there we go, it's automatically selected. New estimate, and you can also list invoices that have this item. So there we go, invoices with commission. So if you have a particular product, you need to know what those invoices are, then you can do that. So let's go back to our items list. You can click into any of these to make edits to them. You have the item name, you have the description, you can add a SKU if you need it. This is for internal uh, stuff only. This is doesn't show up in the invoices. Uh, same with your categories and subcategories. You can also add a cost. So this is an internal cost. So let's say this is costs you $1,500. Um, you could put it here. And that's more for your own internal tracking. Taxable, whether this is a taxable or non-taxable item and then you can add the taxes for it. You can also go click list taxes over here and this is your list of taxes. So you can add more, you can edit them and your category list. So if you have different categories, they'll be here. So, and you can add your subcategories as well. This area we will expand and make it more useful. It's a bit of a newer area. All right, so that's your items. Uh, we've covered your clients, your estimates and invoices. Uh, next up would be accepting payments. So if you want to accept payments on your invoices, you just click this accept payments in the menu and you go through the process. We use a payments platform called Stripe. Through Stripe, our Stripe integration, and we are a Stripe partner, you can accept credit card, debit card, mobile wallet, as well as bank payments like bank transfers, ACH payments, and different payment methods depending on your country. So there we go. We've gone through all of our items here. Uh, now we're going to jump into our settings. So in settings, uh, we have the tabs up top. You have your account settings, your application, invoice estimate, notifications, and billing. Under your account info, you have uh, your contact information. This is the information that shows up on the invoice, invoices and estimates up in the top right. This is just your company name or whatever name you want to be there. Phone number, email. Um, if you do need to change the email, you have to email us and request it. And we will be updating this so you can do it yourself. Your address, your country, and your currency. 
Again, the currency is the default currency, which just means anytime you create an invoice or an estimate, that currency will be selected. Uh, but you can always edit those per document. Your application settings is really just your default logo and the results per page. Results per page means how many of these you want to see per page. So if you don't really like seeing a whole bunch of information, you can just do that and then you'll get this to scroll through. And you can always change that here. Going back to settings, so we've gone over our account, our application, and now our invoice. So these are the invoice settings. So this is your default heading notes and terms for invoices. You can leave these blank if you do not want default text. So this is your heading. Uh, so if you have an invoice, it'll say invoice at the top, but maybe you prefer to call these a bill of sale or something different. You can edit these anytime you want. Um, and these are just your defaults. If you need to set them for individual documents, you do that in the editor. Notes and terms. Uh, here's some of the toggles to turn on some automatic, uh, some of our automation. So if you want to send a receipt automatically, you just turn that on. Every time a payment has been entered, a receipt automatically sends. Late payment reminders, you want to automatically send reminders for late payments. You turn that on, set these how you want them to be set, and you're good to go. Now, what you can do is you can actually, you can leave this on, but let's say you had an invoice that you didn't want to send a late payment reminder on. You would just go up to that invoice and you would disable that reminders toggle for that invoice. You just turn it off. I'm just gonna disable this for now. Um, and this is the payment button on the stub screen. So once you have gone through the accept payments process, you can have this as default on or off. Estimate, estimate settings. This one is automatically create an invoice from an estimate and email it to your client when approved. This is our automation, which once an, uh, an estimate has been approved, an invoice will automatically be created and sent to your client. So if your estimate looks good, you're not changing anything else with it, you're happy with all the numbers, all the details, leave this on, it'll speed things up for you, make your life way easier. Um, but if you find that there's a lot of back and forth, even after you've approved an estimate and you have to do some more work in the invoice, leave this off. Uh, again, this is a premium feature, so you need to have a paid account to use this. Below we have our default heading notes and terms for estimates, same as the, is the invoices. Over here is our notifications. So this is where you can select what things you're notified for. You can disable them all if you want, or you can leave them on. And then you can choose what you want to be notified for. These notifications are only in the app, so what you see up here. They're not email notifications. We will be adding email notifications and it will be similar options here. There will probably be a column that says email and in-app and you can choose which ones you want to receive. Over here is billing. So if you have an account, uh, a paid account, you'll be able to see that. This is just our test account, but if you did have an account, it would say view your billing profile. And that's it. That's everything that Invoicer does. I hope this helps. Uh, we're always adding new stuff and it was time to create a new one of these because the old one is a bit outdated and was missing quite a few things. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can always click the chat box down in the bottom right and send us a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. You can also send us an email at support at invoicer.ai. Thanks for watching and happy invoicing.